In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Faith and works are both necessary for salvation. The battle between faith alone versus faith and works for salvation has been going on ever since the Reformation churches in 1517. The Bible verses in question are when Paul says that we also believe in Christ Jesus, that we may be justified by the faith of Christ and not by the works of the law, Galatians 2.16. And when James says that faith without works is dead, James 2.26, since the divinely inspired word of God, it cannot contradict itself. Many people over the centuries have spent countless hours trying to account for this apparent differences. The simple answer is that we are saved by grace, Ephesians 2.8, and not by works. However, one has to remember that it is not enough to simply say, I believe, and then do nothing. The Bible says, not everyone who says, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but rather, he who does the will of my Father, Matthew 7, 21. Therefore, it must be assumed that works are indeed a necessary component of one's faith. Too many people think that faith means giving God lip service only. This generation honors me with their lips, while their hearts is far from me, Matthew 15, 18. Rather than actually doing good deeds for, for others, Another thing to remember is that the Jews of Paul's day had many observances of the law that they had to keep, like not eating pork, ritual hand washing, etc. Paul may have been referring to these ritualistic works when he used the term dead works, Hebrews 9.14. In fact, in Romans 3.20, Paul says, Because by the works of the law, no flesh shall be justified before him. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. A very clear distinction between works of the law and doing good deeds as a result of the fruits of your faith. During the Reformation, Martin Luther took it upon himself to change the understanding of the Bible around to fit his own particular theology. Not only did he throw out seven complete books of the Old Testament and parts of of two other books, he also implied that Christians are saved by faith alone because of Romans 3.28 which states, Therefore we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law, rather than the way it was taught for over 1400 years. He even inserted the word alone into Romans 3.28 when he translated it. One has to wonder about the wisdom of changing the interpretation of the divinely inspired word of God to fit your own theology, especially after 14 centuries. The only thing you actually do see the words faith and alone together in a sentence is the James 3.24, where James says, see how your person is justified by works and not by faith alone, James 2.24. Why is this important? In the story about Judgment Day, Matthew 25, 31 through 48, Six, where Jesus separates the sheep from the goats, the only questions that Jesus asked was, did you feed the hungry? Did you clothe the naked? Did you give a drink to the thirsty? Did you see a stranger and invite him him? Did you visit a prisoner and gave him hope? Did you visit the sick and took care of him? If they answered no to these works in Matthew 25, then Jesus said that they were going to hell. So you can infer from all of this that just confessing with your lips that Jesus is your personal Lord and Savior is not enough. The book of James in the Bible says that your faith must be justified by works. James 2, 24, which is much different from the, what Paul says in Galatians 2, 16 about we may be justified by the faith of Christ and not by the works of the law. Once you have the faith and are justified by it, then your faith in turn must then be justified by works. Just as it's not enough to tell your wife that you love her and never do anything for her, it's also true of your faith relationship with Jesus. Faith and performing good works for your fellow man go together like body and soul. You simply aren't alive unless both body and soul are united, James 2.26. It's the same for being alive in Christ. You need faith in Christ first, then good works. 
not works of the law to justify that faith. Neither one on its own will get you into heaven. Once again, when all is said and done, we are nothing more than servants of God. Romans 6.22 Another important reminder is that when Jesus cured someone, he said, your faith has cured you. Nothing else but the cured person's faith. So since we all want to be cured of something, how does one get more faith? One great way is by performing the fruits of your faith's good works as a result of your faith in Christ in order to please God. Just like a weightlifter can't get more muscles by merely saying that he believes in weightlifting. Just so a Christian doesn't get more faith by merely saying that he believes in Jesus. He has to actually do something, like praying for more faith or by performing good works as a result of his faith. In order to please God, it's also hard to have impure thoughts and do evil things if your primary goal in life is to perform the fruits of faith's good works in order to please God. So think of the reasons for doing good works for the glory of God in these three ways. 1. Prevent yourself from performing evil. 2. Build up your own faith. 3. Build up the kingdom of God. In summary, Martin Luther was wrong to change the interpretation of the Holy Spirit scripture in the 16th century to imply that we are saved by faith alone. In fact, James says that your faith must be justified by works, James 2.24. But your good works must not be motivated by selfish reasons. True faith in Jesus Christ will naturally lead you to perform good works by imitating the life of Jesus. In Ephesians 2.10, Paul says, For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus in good works, which God has prepared that we should walk in them. Always keep in mind the two definitions of the word work as used in the Bible. One meaning refers to a work of the Jewish law, does one no good. And the other definition refers to a good deed, very beneficial, which can make your faith come alive. Sometimes we see that when we say words of encouragement to those who need it, whether in funerals or in troublesome days, these words can change their lives and grow their faith. That is also considered doing a good deed. Sometimes we are accused of trying to work our way into heaven by doing good deeds, but not in faith with Christ Jesus. Nothing could be farther from the truth. The grace one gets from the sacraments enables our Church of the East people to do more good works. We do not do good works to receive more grace. For the Lord knows our needs, and our Father who sees in secret shall reward thee openly in your days on earth and in heaven. In Matthew 6, it says, Do not store up for yourself treasures on earth, where moth and rust destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroys, and where thieves do not break in or steal. We are all guests on this so-called earth, and will leave it one day. Start thinking of what will your answer be that glorious day as you stand face to face with your Maker. God bless you all, and may the gracious God shed His light upon your hearts to do His will. Amen, and please pray for us as we will be praying for you.